Welcome to another FPL video. The double game weeks are announced for game week 22. I'm going to be breaking them down, talking about which teams have a double game week and also other factors that we need to consider that could have a really big effect on game week 22. And then I'm going to be showing you the best free hit team you can make. I'm actually leaning more towards a free hit. That doesn't mean I'm definitely going to be using it, but I've only got three double game week players in 22. So a free hit does look more viable. And let's get straight into this video. On screen, you can see all of the fixtures for Gimmick 22. You can see them on the Premier League website or the FPL website. Now, just to break them down and show you which teams have a double game week, it starts off with Brentford. They have Liverpool away and Manchester United at home. Then we have Brighton who face Crystal Palace at home and Chelsea at home. Then Burnley facing Leicester at home and Watford at home. Chelsea are facing Manchester City away and Brighton away. Leicester are facing Burnley away and Spurs at home. Then we have Manchester United facing Aston Villa away and Brentford away. Spurs facing Arsenal at home and Leicester away. And finally Watford facing Newcastle away and Burnley away. So those are all of the fixtures and a bit underwhelming if I'm being completely honest. And there was one stage where I was thinking of using the bench boost as I talked about in yesterday's team selection video. But now that's definitely not going to be the case. And I'm actually more leaning towards a free hit like I said earlier in the video. I only have three double game week players in David De Gea, Emmanuel Dennis and Marcus Alonso. Four if you can't reach James, but he's probably not going to be making any of those games. So really, I'm not in a great position in Game Week 22, as opposed to maybe a week ago where I thought I could actually bench boost and have a lot of double Game Week players. There's going to be many more mini double Game Weeks and blanks to come, but right now in Game Week 22, it's not really the double Game Week we expected. Still quite a lot of doubles. A lot of teams are doubling, more so than Game Week 21, where it's only three teams. But ultimately, yeah, it's not really looking as good as promised. Now, one really important point that might not be actually talked about enough is that if any FA Cup games for these teams were to be postponed, then their double won't happen. A bit similar to the Arsenal versus Liverpool situation in the Carabao Cup, the fact that their game got postponed and pushed back to two weeks further down the line, so the 20th of January, that means both teams were then unable to have a double game week. So just bear that in mind. If any of those teams that I just mentioned, Brentford, Brighton, Burnley, Chelsea, Leicester, Man United, Spurs or Watford, if any of those teams were to have a postponement in the FA Cup, that means that their double will no longer be a double and they'll only have one game week. And the same goes for any other team that only has one game week currently. If they were to have a postponement, they might actually blank completely. So bear that in mind. That's very important information. And now just one more piece of news before we move on to the best free hit team. So Manchester City have confirmed that there is a major COVID-19 outbreak in their squad. Guardiola and Lillo tested positive this week and 21 members of the first team, which includes seven players, are currently self-isolating. City are adamant that their press conference today and their game tomorrow will go ahead. So that's kind of all the major news today. There's always something, you know, whenever I actually upload a video, as soon as that's done, news comes out and I have to type in like a pinned comment and show you all the updates. So it's kind of hectic at the moment, but hopefully that is all the latest information, at least for today. And let me know what you think of all of this news. Some comments under the community section where I posted uh, all of that piece of news. I'm going to read out some of these comments. So Krishna says, is selling Salah no longer worth it? In my opinion, if you are free hitting in game week 22, you might as well keep Salah because you're going to have him on your bench for one or two game weeks and then he'll be back. So in that case, I think it is worth keeping Salah. It's still worth selling him. So you could sell him now if you're not free hitting and then go about him for two or three game weeks and then bring him back in. But if you are free hitting in game week 22, which I'm kind of leaning more towards, like I said before, then I think it is worth keeping Salah and the kind of arguments for selling him kind of reduce more and more. So that's kind of the way I'd break it down. If you're free hitting, then I would do that. I would actually keep Salah. If you're not free hitting in game week 22, then I'd possibly sell and bring him back in in two or three game weeks time, depending on how far Egypt go in the African Cup of Nations. Another comment by Ditya says, I literally have the same Everton double up and free double game week play this makes the free hit more and more appealing. This makes my decision to sell Salah after Chelsea even worse because I could have benched him in gimmick 23 and I was fine. Guess I'll be rooting for Egypt this African Cup of Nations. That's a fair point in terms of, uh, you know, the free hit being more and more appealing. That's what I believe as well. It's ultimately a team dependent situation. If you already have a lot of double gimmick players, then you don't need to free hit. But if like Dittier and I, you only have around three double gimmick players and you have a lot of kind of single game weekers and maybe you have some Everton double ups who yeah they have a really good fixture against Norwich but is it really worth having them in your team probably not so I completely agree about that I slightly disagree about selling Salah being a bad decision ultimately because who knew all of this would have happened and that Liverpool versus Arsenal would be postponed and then therefore in another competition by the way and that would affect the Premier League and all of that so there's so much that can happen so much that can change so I don't think it was a bad decision to sell Salah and you can ultimately bring him back in but just try to avoid a trip 
triple up in Liverpool, who don't have a double in gimmick 22, and it also opens up that space to bring Salah back in, which I'm sure you're going to do anyway. Imran says, Captain Son in gimmick 22. I'm probably thinking about that, to be honest. And if I do bring Son in, whether it's on a free hit or a normal transfer, I'm probably going to be captaining Hyun Ming Son. Another one would be Cristiano Ronaldo. But yeah, the doubles don't look particularly great regardless. Even for Spurs, you know, quite tough fixtures against Arsenal and Leicester. But Son is still a really good captaincy option. And then Paul fans makes a really good point. The FA should stop home and away ties for Carabao Cup and replays for the FA Cup. Change the format of these ties to a single game. I completely agree. But I don't think common sense is in the FA or the EFL's repertoire. But yeah, that's just another you know story, another discussion that we need to be had. But I completely agree with your point. And then this is a fair argument, a fair you know question by... Uh, Gazno, it's not really a, a great double game week fixtures. What's the point of free hitting when United will most likely slip up in two tough away games? Now, you make a fair point. I don't trust United completely, but I would still like to have Cristiano Ronaldo potentially and maybe David De Gea. But uh, yeah, you make a fair point. You don't have to free hit, and it's ultimately a team dependent question. If, for example, you only have three double game week players like myself, or maybe even less, then you could actually take advantage of using a free hit and you can have these players who are good for gimmick 22 but beyond that you probably don't want them and you can also then keep Salah by free hitting in 22 because you only have to bench Salah for one or two game weeks that's the way I see it now you make a fair point you don't have to free hit but ultimately it's a team dependent question and a team dependent answer but yeah I agree the uh, double game weeks aren't particularly great but at the same time you can take advantage of them with a free hit and then move forward and you don't have to completely jeopardize the future just by focusing on gimmick 22 and bringing in these players but you can also at the same time really do well on gimmick 22 by maybe altering your plans a little bit and playing a free hit but ultimately what's good for me might not be good for you but it's a fair point you make and thank you to everyone who commented on that community post and now let's actually move on to the best free hit team one by one and let me know what you think of all of these selections down in the comment section below I actually made free hit and wildcard drafts in preparation for these videos, but because of the news of the double game weeks, that has changed things a lot. So these teams will look much different than they would have been beforehand. And now this will be with the latest information. So this is the one that counts. So in goal, I would go for two double game week players. Now you don't have to have two really good goalkeepers in a free hit because remember only one of them will play. You cannot play two chips at once. So you can't free hit and bench boost in the same game week. Otherwise, you could actually just do both of them and get it out of the way. But I will be going for David De Gea and possibly Robert Sanchez as your two goalkeepers, just in case. And I probably would start David De Gea. The fixtures are better, but at the same time, Brighton's defense is arguably a little bit better. But we're still going to be covering Brighton and their defense in another way in the starting 11. But this is what I'd go with. David De Gea and Sanchez, two relatively cheap goalkeepers in the grand scheme of things and probably two of the best goalkeepers who have a double game week. Now, yeah, uh, ideally you'd want to have Jose Saar, but he doesn't have a double game week. You'd want Aaron Ramsdale, but he's only got one game and it's against Tottenham. And then you're looking at Hugo Lloris potentially. You could double up on Spurs defence. The fixtures aren't particularly great. But if you want to just go for the best defences and maximise those clean sheet probabilities, then maybe go for Hugo Lloris instead of David De Gea. But ultimately, you can still cover Spurs in another way. So David De Gea and Sanchez are in goal, but you can go for Hugo Lloris if you want to go for one of the best defences in the league. Here we are with the defence, and I've selected Alonso, Cucurella, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Reguilon and Lowton. Now, with Marcus Alonso, he does have a double game week. Well, pretty much all of these defenders do, except for Trent Alexander-Arnold. And the fixtures for Chelsea aren't particularly great. Great, but at the same time they're not too bad so they're facing Manchester City away and Brighton away I still think it's worth going for him you could still bench him even if you do free hit and go for Marcus Alonso there is still Antonio Rudiger as well Rhys James would normally be the best pick but he is injured and you don't have to go for Alonso he's relatively expensive and he is facing City as one of those two games but he can still pick up one or two points in that game and then possibly get a clean sheet against Brighton but I can understand if that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea now Cucurella I think is a really good choice you can start David De Gea or Hugo Lloris and go for Cucurella to cover both teams and I think Brighton once again the fixtures aren't amazing and to be honest with most of these teams it's kind of a recurring theme there's not really a standout set of fixtures um, for most of these teams Brighton face Crystal Palace at home and Chelsea at home and that's still pretty decent two home ties and I think they could do all right but once again I don't think it's particularly amazing the doubles could have been better for a lot of these teams but Brighton always would have had quite a difficult double game week because they had a lot of kind of tough unscheduled fixtures uh, against some of the best teams in the league including Chelsea 
Then we have Trent, and to be honest, he only has one game against Brentford, but Trent is that good that in that one game he cannot score any other defender, so I would still go for him on a free hit, and I'd probably start him, to be honest, in most cases. And the other one is Sergio Reguilón, who also has a double game week. Remember, it will be against Arsenal at home and Leicester away. Once again, quite a tough set of double game week fixtures. Would I go with Hugo Lloris and Sergio Reguilón or another Spurs defender? I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't double up, but I would go for one of them. And Spurs, as I keep saying under Antonio Conte, have the best XGC per 90 of any team. And that's pretty much since game week 11, I believe. Now, they were really poor against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup first leg yesterday, but still, they've been very good under Conte in general. And I think Reguilón is the best defender. He got a rest in that game, and Doherty, I believe, played in that left wing-back spot. And then to conclude his team, Matthew Lowton. Now, the reason I've gone for him, and actually, he's an even better pick on a wild card or a free transfer, is that Burnley have four games that are yet to be rescheduled. Now, one of them now has been rescheduled to game week 22. So he's a good long-term option as well. And if you look at the actual double game week, it's probably one of the better sets of doubles of any team. So Burnley will have two home games against Leicester and Watford. That's probably one of the best set of double game weeks. Let me know what you think. And I think he could be one of the better options on your bench. And to be honest, with those fixtures, you could arguably start him over most of the other defenders you see on screen, maybe even Marcus Alonso. So it's up to you who you go for. But I think Lowton is actually one of the better options this week, especially around 4.4 million. There's also Charlie Taylor, but Lowton is probably one of the best ones. And actually, he was a bit of a hero last season in some of the double game weeks. So Lowton is the one I'd go for as a cheap defender. And now let's move on to the midfielders. I've been talking about avoiding Chelsea players, but I think on a free hit, when you have them for one week and then you don't have to have them heading into game weeks 23 onwards, I think Mason Mount and Marcus Alonso are probably the two Chelsea players you want to go for. Now, there is Pulisic, there is a few others like Lukaku who are now getting back into the mix, but Mason Mount is the one Chelsea attacker I would go for. And if you look at the rest of the midfield, I think Hyun Son is a non-negotiable. I know the double isn't great on paper, the fixtures are relatively tough, but Hyun Son is still one of the best captaincy options this week, and he's just so good, he's fixture-proof. Diego Jot and Gerard Bowen both have single game weeks against Brentford and Leeds respectively, but I think they are still really good. If Liverpool versus Arsenal didn't get postponed in the Carabao Cup, then Jota could have actually had probably the best set of double game weeks, same with Trent Alexander-Arnold. They would have faced Brentford and possibly Leeds at home, and if not, it would have actually been Arsenal in the Premier League. So, yeah, things unfortunately haven't turned out in that way, but I still think Jota and Boeing can do really well this week, and you can bench them if need be. James Madison, I think, is one of the best options this week, and he has a double game week in Burnley away and Spurs at home, so I think it's a pretty decent set of a double game week. I know Spurs is quite a tough fixture nowadays with Antonio Conte, but I think this midfield is really good. There is also Trossard that you could go for, and if you want a midfield around 6.5 million or under, then I think Trossard is the way to go. But this is probably the midfield I'd go for, and I wouldn't be too bogged down into getting double game week players. If Bruno Fernandes showed the form of last season, then I think he would definitely be a worthwhile inclusion here. Or if City had a double, but remember, they do not have a double game week. Same with most teams in the league, to be fair. So this is the five midfielders I've gone for, and I think it's pretty decent on the whole. And not too much money, and at the same time, very balanced. A lot of six to eight million pound midfielders. So now let's go on to the strikers and complete this team. To conclude this team, we have Cristiano Ronaldo, Joshua King, and Emmanuel Dennis. Now, there is an argument to be made to go for Harry Kane over Ronaldo, but I think Ronaldo this season has shown that he's far more explosive, and despite Kane's really good form, he's only really been getting six, seven points, really, and he hasn't really gotten into the double digits apart from that game against Newcastle a long time ago. Now, I still think Kane is playing in a better team, and he actually is probably a better option than Ronaldo long term. But if you're looking at Ronaldo right now, for this double game week, he is the talisman for Manchester United. He could get one double digit return in these two games, and that'll be more than enough. And another thing to say really about Man United, that is that they probably have the best set of double game week fixtures along with Burnley. So Manchester United face Aston Villa away and Brentford away. And I think that's a really good set of fixtures. And as um, alluded to before by one of the comments, yes, Manchester United could slip up in both of these games, but I think they could get one result and that'll be all they need. And Ronaldo, even if United lose, he can still get a goal or two. And for me, Ronaldo is still one of the best options this week for the captaincy. And despite some really poor showings from him and Manchester United, I still think he's a great option. Going for a double up in Watford is something that I kind of try to avoid and I've been talking about it. You know, I'd rather diversify the attack 
but I've only got 0.4 million remaining with this squad. If you do have more money, then you can go for someone else. Maybe even Mikel Antonio, who has a single game week, or Ivan Tony. Ivan Tony does have a double game week, but I'd probably avoid all Brentford assets, to be honest, despite the fact that they have a double. They are facing Manchester United and Liverpool. Yes, they can do well against Man United, but I'm still not a big fan of Brentford's assets, as I'll talk about in my transfer tips video very soon. But King and Dennis are fine. You could actually bench one of them, and it's always a risk if you go for both of them and then end up benching one of them, because you could end up benching the one who gets more points. But ultimately, this is the team I would go for. And now I'm going to be talking about who I would start if I went with this team. And to be honest, because I'm leaning more towards a free hit, this is very likely to be so similar to my final free hit team. And obviously, over the next week or two, a lot can change with the remaining Gimmick 21 fixtures, the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. So that could alter these plans slightly, uh, but we'll wait and see what happens there. So in goal, I would go for David De Gea and in defence, this is where it gets a bit tricky. I would still probably go for Trent Alexander-Arnold. I would probably start him and I'd go for Reguilón and probably Mark Cucurella as the free in there. But I'm also very tempted to start a Marcus Alonso or a Matthew Lowton. And to be fair, you could actually go for a back four or a back five as well. With all things considered, I'd actually be a bit more tempted to start a Marcus Alonso over a Mason Mount, but you don't have to. So I'm actually going to go for a back four here and go for Alonso, Cucurella, Trent and Reguilón. And with the midfield, Huming Son is an easy keep in the team and he's definitely going to be starting. I would actually go for Diego Jota, James Madison and then it's between Bowen and Mason Mount for that final spot. Now that's where it gets a bit tricky and Bowen has the better fixture but Mason Mount has that double game week so that makes it a bit more difficult. In the end I'll probably just go with the double game weeker in Mason Mount but Jared Bowen you know benching him I'd still be a bit uneasy and that's one kind of problem with free hitting is that a lot of these players that you have on the bench could do really well whether it's Mikel Antonio, Jared Bowen or if you decide to a Diego Jota. So I'm actually going to go with Mason Mount but I'm kind of 50-50 on that decision between starting him and Jared Bowen. And then up front, I'll go with two strikers, Cristiano Ronaldo and Emmanuel Dennis. And as I said before in this video, I think it's very risky to go for a double up in Watford attack because if I do bench King, he could easily get a penalty and outscore Emmanuel Dennis in one or both of these games. So there's always a risk, whatever you do, but you'd rather have the squad depth and be able to count on players off the bench if needed than just have no squad depth at all because you could end up being down to nine or eight players or just not have as many double gimmick players as you anticipated because as I said before, if there are any postponements in the FA Cup for any team in the Premier League, then they could go from two fixtures to one in double game week 22 or if they only have one game, they could go down to zero games and blank completely. So just bear that in mind, but it's mainly the case with those double game week teams if they have any postponements, then things could go bad and they don't end up having a double game week. So let me know what you think of this team. Would you change anything? And I can understand if you would want to. Maybe you'd want to go for a Trossard in midfield. Maybe you'd want to go for a Mikel Antonio or another striker like Harry Kane instead and not go for a double up in Watford attack. I completely understand that. And this team isn't perfect, but at the same time, it's one of the best, if not the best uh, kind of templates for Game Week 22 in terms of the free hit. And I'm actually really tempted to play the free hit because I only have three double gimmick players. And beforehand, I thought I could have had maybe six or more. So we'll wait and see what happens there. But we've got over a week now to prepare for Game Week 22. And yeah, you know, the deadline is next Friday. So we can actually spend more time planning and we can see how things change and evolve with the other cup competitions and the remainder of Game Week 21. And if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. A lot of information with the double game weeks with Manchester City's COVID situation and also the free hit. And just to let you know, if you do have two free hits, if you decide to use one here, you cannot use it in the following game week as well. You have to use it in the space of two game weeks time. So if I use the free hit in game week 22, if I want to use the second one again, I'd have to wait until game week 24. And also in terms of the free hit, it only lasts for one game week. And then the following week, you're going to go back to the team you had before you activated the free hit. And that's why a lot of people are actually looking to use the free hit in game week 22, keep Salah and only bench him for one or two game weeks maximum. And then you're in a good position to attack game weeks 25 onwards. So let's see how this all pans out. We can still plan, but just bear in mind that a lot of your plans could be undermined by COVID. 
and other postponements. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan underscore RCM, and you can also join the Discord server. The link is in the description below, and also the FPL League. It's still open, and the same goes for UCL Fantasy. There's going to be more content for that as well over the next few months, and good luck with Game Week 22. There's also going to be a Best Wildcard Team video and a Transfer Tips video coming up, and probably an updated team selection because so much has changed and keeps on changing in this volatile FPL environment. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.